In this session, we're going to try to answer the question, what is WordPress? It's a surprisingly difficult question because WordPress can be so many different things to so many different people. WordPress started out as a simple blogging platform. It was intended to allow people to keep an online journal, to post dated content, post some pictures, links to other websites that they really like, and that sort of thing. But over time, people started trying to make it do what they wanted to. As an open source project, People were able to make changes to the program and make it do different things, things that nobody ever thought of having it do. So we're going to take a look at some of those things today. The first site we're going to look at is a regular blog. This is a flashlight review site. David Wise runs it, and he really likes flashlights. After speaking with him, I can sort of see some of the appeal. Modern flashlights are much different from the things I used as a kid. He'll get a flashlight from a manufacturer, use it for a little while, and then do a blog post. So here you can see there's one post here on the left. You scroll down, and there's another, and another, and you'll note they're all about the same length here on this page. That's because this is the archive page, and it only shows basically a little introduction on each post. And then at the bottom, there's a link that says, read the rest of this entry. The sidebar is a pretty standard blog sidebar, a search box, categories, upcoming content. Tags are interesting. You can tag a post with keywords that help people find the post. This is called a tag cloud, and larger words are more common. This makes it easy to see which ones are more used and which ones are less used. Standard fan icons for social networks and things like that. And a little way to subscribe. At the bottom is what's called a fat footer. There's more stuff than in a normal footer. There's links, advertisements, more than just contact information. So this is a pretty standard blog. Posts with dated content, a few extra pages, not too much else. But people wanted more than a blog. They wanted to be able to manage pages better, and they wanted to have content that was different from just pages and posts. This site is for a landscaping company. They make high-end pools and landscaping and things like that. The blog was secondary on this site. Mostly it's intended to be a content presentation site, a showcase for their product. Right at the beginning is a slideshow. And you see some content here that is similar to a post. It even has a read more link at the bottom like a post does. They're not posts. They're what we call a custom content type. And we'll go over that in a few minutes. Then down below is another kind of fat footer. The project gallery on the left has links to the different projects. The recent updates is actually their recent blog titles. And then there's a way to sign up for the newsletter on the right. You can see from the navigation on this site that the blog is not the primary tool on this WordPress site. There's the portfolio, the About Us page, a links page, then there's the blog, and a testimonials page. Testimonials are another custom content type. They're similar to posts, but unlike a blog post, there's no date necessarily attached to it, because it doesn't matter when they said it. It simply matters that they did. Let's move on to the next site. The Persecution Project deals with helping people groups that are being attacked, typically physically and violently. So this would be helping people in Rwanda, Southeast Asia, etc. The primary purpose of this particular site is to gather volunteers, and so this page asks people to self-identify themselves, leader or influencer, implementer, artist, connector, specialist, etc. These are custom content types, and we'll look at how those work now. Here at the top, there's a title, then a short description, a link, and a picture. If you click through, there's a page just for this. There's a larger picture, a larger content area, and there's a form here on the left for signing up to take part. In the administration area, on the left, there's an Active Options tab. This is not stock WordPress. This content type was created with a plugin. One of the large benefits of a custom content type is that you can add extra fields that aren't in WordPress. In this page, there's the title and the large description, which are standard WordPress fields. Then there's the excerpt, which was the small bit of text we saw on the first page, also standard WordPress. A featured image, which was the small image on the first page, standard WordPress. 
But then we come down here and there are option choices. And these were custom and added by the plugin. I was able to create these fields myself so that I could then use them on the website. So there's the secondary title, the I am tag. There's the large image on the page that had the form. A Gravity Forms ID. Gravity Forms is the form software that we use to create a form. And then there's a Contact Form 7 shortcode. We also use Contact Form 7 for forms. So using custom content types, I was able to extend WordPress to do something that it was never intended to do at all and make the site much more functional and attractive and useful. E-commerce is something else that WordPress was never intended to do, but people found themselves wanting to do it. This site sells frozen soup. They'll sell small amounts to individuals, or they'll sell pallets to restaurants. Here you can see the products, and in the bottom left is the cart. Click Add to Cart, and now there's a product in the cart. You can fill out your zip code for shipping. This particular site uses PayPal for its payments, but the software can use pretty much any payment gateway. Let's take a look at how that works. The plugin we're using for e-commerce is called Cart66. This is the dashboard, and you can see that there are panels with information about sales and product, etc. The main page of the plugin admin area shows sales. And then this is the product page. This is the form to create a new product. And then down below are all the products. It can handle prices, numbers, shipping, taxes, weights. Can sell digital products like music and video. You can have product variations like sizes on t-shirts and things like that. There's a way to make custom fields. So for our Christmas product we allowed people to type in a Christmas greeting. Once the products are made, they can easily be embedded via a shortcode in any post, page, or custom content type. I made a custom content type for soups. So here we have the title, the description, and then a custom field for soup information. There's a link to the PDF of nutritional information, whether or not it's available in pints, whether or not we want to sell this soup online, and if we were selling the soup online, I could click this cart 66 icon and choose a product and insert short code and now there would be a buy button on this product. In the cart 66 settings you can manage all kinds of things about how cart 66 works. Your cart and checkout settings, tax rates, PayPal settings, payment gateways, receipt settings, all that stuff. So it's an extremely powerful option. But there are many other e-commerce platforms for WordPress. There's an excellent one called Shop. There's another called FoxyCart. And each one has different areas in which it excels. So if you're looking at e-commerce on WordPress, take a look at all of them and see what they do and how they work. The last one we're going to look at is for Montcalm Community College. This one uses a more extreme example of custom content types. Just like any other college, they have programs, degrees, etc. Let's take a look at machine tool operation. There's a title and several different blocks of text. In the admin area, you can see that we're using the title, but in this case, we're not actually using the description area at all. On the right, we're choosing certificate for the program type. That's how it gets listed in certificates. And we have an area for connected courses, so that we can say that these particular courses need to be associated with this program. And we can choose if they're required, general requirements, what kind of class it is, and whether this is specifically a program class or an elective. These connected courses are another content type, so I have a big list of courses elsewhere in WordPress. Then down here are those blocks of text that we pointed out before. There's the program information, why this degree, program requirements, and gainful employment. So as you can see, WordPress can be used for just about anything. And when you ask the question, what is WordPress? The answer is whatever you want it to be.